Welcome back. And lastly, we talked about aldosterone and ADH and what role they play when it comes to salt and water regulation in the body. And in this video, we're actually going to go over the next syllabus requirement, which is still related to aldosterone. So it says, present information to outline the general use of hormone replacement therapy in people who cannot secrete aldosterone. So secrete again means produce, uh, so that means they're not uh, producing aldosterone. And what general use that hormone replacement therapy has, uh, uh, using an alternative for people who can't produce aldosterone. So we'll go over quickly what aldosterone, aldosterone was again. Let's just recap the last video. Aldosterone was produced here, so produced at the adrenal gland. Um, its role was to, it was a hormone, it was going to go from the adrenal gland all the way to the kidney. In the kidney, it increased sodium retention. And remember, when you increase your sodium, you also increase your water reabsorption because water goes from low, low solute to high solute. So we've increased our sodium retention in our body. Retention means keeping hold of. And that means we've hold on to more water as well. And holding on to more water means we've increased our water volumes in our body. And if we increase our water volumes, that's the same as so water and plasma. Our usual plasma is mostly water. So what that means, I'll do that again, is we've increased our water volume, so our blood plasma. And that same time also increases our blood pressure. Blood pressure was just a, a how fast um, blood flows. So if we have more plasma, more stuff, like more liquid in that same area, then the actual blood will flow faster. And we want to make sure we keep that at a normal level. So we want to make sure that is like that always. Like we want to have that normal state of blood flow because if it flows too fast or too slow, that could be a problem. So we want to keep it at a normal level. So aldosterone make sure we bring our blood pressure and our blood volume back to normal. So aldosterone is in, so usually increasing blood volume and an increased blood volume it also increases blood pressure. So these are usually, aldosterone is usually produced when we have too low blood volume and too low blood pressure to bring it back up. All right, so this says um, generally used for therapy for people who can't uh, secrete aldosterone. It's actually a disease. This is a disease uh, that people can have. It's called Addison's disease. And for people with Addison's disease, their problem is this. So we have here, we have that same picture again. But their problem is their, their adrenal gland doesn't really work properly and doesn't produce the hormonal aldosterone. So we have no adrenal gland working properly, which means we have no aldosterone, which means we have no more effect of increasing our blood volume and increasing our blood pressure. So for people who have this Addison's disease, they often have low blood volume and low blood plasma, uh, blood pressure, sorry. So low blood volume and low blood pressure, those two are symptoms of Addison's disease. And the reason why is because they're not producing aldosterone. Aldosterone would usually increase those two levels. And the problem is when it comes to those two symptoms, that can lead to heart failure. So heart failure because you have low blood pressure. Um, so one alternative for people who have no working um, adrenal gland and are not producing aldosterone is actually this medication called fluoro uh, fluorodrocortisones, it's a bit of a mouthful, uh, fluorodrocortisones, that's this medication here, and you can imagine, um, again I'm going to draw it at yellow, you can imagine this person, again a really, really bad attempt at drawing this person, but this, this uh, yellow dot is the same as this medication, and I've drawn that yellow dot the same color as aldosterone because it does, like, the medication has a very similar effect. But if this person were to eat that medication, it would travel through his stomach into small intestine and get absorbed into the bloodstream. Right? So you can imagine now we have this fluorocortisones in our blood. And this is going to do exactly the same as aldosterone would. So if we go here, it increases sodium retention. And if it increases sodium retention, uh, that means we have higher solute in our blood. And high solute in blood means the uh, water is going to go from our kidney back into our, into our blood as well, because water travels from a low solute to high solute. So low solute in the kidney, high solute in blood, which means it travels back into the blood. So what that means is, if we can we look at that picture again, it will increase our blood pressure and our blood volume, so everything is normal again. Right? So that's the function. So um, we'd be happy. Right? So everything is happy. Everything is good.
because everything's back to normal. So fludrocortisones is just a way to bring back our blood pressure and blood volume if we lack a functional adrenal gland and if we produce normal aldosterone and that disease is called the Addison's disease. Now one problem is um, it can happen because obviously if we have if we're taking medication that's all man controlled. So you think about what homeostasis was. Homeostasis was a feedback system to keep constant constant internal environment. So what you can imagine is this brown area, this brown region, is our ideal blood volume, the amount of blood we, volume we want to have. And then if it goes too high to low, two things happen. If it goes too low, then we produce aldosterone, so A for aldosterone. That's what happens if we have it too low. And if it goes up, then to bring it back down, we produce less, so increase in aldosterone if we have too low blood volume to bring it back up, and a decrease in aldosterone if it's too high to bring it back down. Right? So those two mechanisms are there to make sure we keep a constant internal environment to keep it at that ideal level for blood volume. Right? But what you can imagine, if humans are consuming medication, obviously homeostasis won't work, that feedback system won't work, it won't know exactly how much we have. So if we just eat too much medication, like you can imagine now we'll be eating too much. So this, what I'll draw here in pink purplish, is we start low, we eat the medication here, so this is where we eat the medication. And then our, we eat too much of it as well, and then it goes up like crazy. So now our blood volume is way too high. Um, that's because we had we ate too much medication. So you imagine instead of eating one of those, we eat a couple more, and then we have too much of it. And that means we we keep on hold of too much of our um, blood. And you can imagine instead of being normal, now it's gonna go crazy high. So this is an increase. Now it's high blood pressure. We've eaten too much medication, our blood pressure is now high blood pressure. And on the same, like low blood pressure is bad, but high blood pressure is bad as well. So one of the problems when you take this medication is that you always have to check, so you mo so people have to monitor your blood pressure and blood volume. And the reason why is because usually if we have everything working, our body will, through homeostasis, will make sure it's kept at a very fine level. But if we don't have a working um, adrenal gland, that means that aldosterone is not produced and that feedback me mechanism stops as well. And the only way we can keep our blood pressure and blood volume normal is eating medication. But if we eat too much of it, that means our blood pressure will go too high. And again, beforehand, obviously, if it's normal, it's good, but if it's too high, that goes away and it's bad. So, um, yeah, if you have that adrenal gland deficiency, you've got to take that medication called fluorocortisones, but you got to make sure you don't take too much of it because otherwise you get high blood pressure. So, I hope that helped. We had um, the disease was Addison's disease that causes low blood volume and low blood pressure, and that causes that ultimately leads to heart failure. To overcome that, we take a medication called fluorocortisones. Um, and that will increase our blood pressure and our blood volume to normal levels. But we've got to make sure we don't eat too much of it, because if we eat too much of it, then it goes from normal to high. And that's also bad for our organs and for our um, body itself. Hopefully that made sense.